All right, welcome back to another YouTube video. In this one, I'm gonna be going through number one, what is a Blue Ocean offer? And number two, how you can create one for your agency or your coaching business. I promise you, if you take action on this training, it is gonna give you single-handedly the biggest breakthrough that you could ever have in your business if you don't currently already have an offer that's working. Changing your offer changes the entire trajectory of your business period, hands down, there's no question about it, right? And I always get asked that question, how do you create Blue Ocean Offer? Because I talk about it a lot, right? I talk about the idea that the offer is the most important aspect of your entire business, as I say. And you know, if you get a little bit better at sales, you know, you're gonna go from maybe a 30% close rate to maybe a 35% close rate, but it's not gonna change your entire business around, right? You're not gonna go from a 0% close rate to a 40% close rate if you get a little bit better at sales. Same thing with setting. If you get a little bit better at setting calls, that's great, but you're not gonna go from zero a month to, you know, 100,000 a month just by getting better at setting calls. If you get better at leadership, you can have a big breakthrough, but it's not gonna take you from like zero or five or like really struggling each and every month to like break through like 500 grand a month. It's not gonna happen. But one of the only things that you can change that will have that uh, massive impact on your growth can literally take you from zero to 100, take you from, you know, 50 to 500 a month. The thing that's gonna have the, that biggest impact is your offer, period, hands down, every single time. So in this video, what I wanna go through is, number one, what is a Blue Ocean offer specifically? Like, what does that term mean specifically? And number two, how you can create one for your business, step by step. I'm excited for this one. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So as I say, what is a Blue Ocean offer and how to create one for your business? First things first, I just wanna quickly go through this. I've had this on the channel before, but I wanna reiterate just to show you how much of an, an impact a Blue Ocean offer has versus a Red Ocean offer or typically your current offer. Most people, 99% of the, um, the industry, 99% of agency owners, 99% of coaches have a Red Ocean offer right now. And if you do, here's the impact that having a Blue Ocean offer or creating a Blue Ocean offer, which is what we're gonna go through in this video, here's the impact that that can have on your business. So let's say for example, you know, we'll look at, so I've got an advertising example here as well, um, but let's just do outbound prospecting. So you're doing outbound prospecting, you're doing outbound, whatever this is through emails, it's outbound dials, it's outbound on Twitter, LinkedIn, it doesn't matter. You're doing outbound, okay? And right now, every month, you're sending a thousand messages. So for your Red Ocean offer, you're sending a thousand messages. For your Blue Ocean offer, you're also sending a thousand messages, right? Two separate offers, you're both sending the same amount of messages. And here, I've put 25 in here, but let's just say you get the same uh, open rate. 15%, okay? Let me actually change that though to 50%. That's more realistic, honestly. So we'll change this to 50%, okay? And so out of these two here, they're both exactly the same, right? They're both exactly the same, okay? So 1,000 messages sent, 1,000 messages sent, both 50% open rate. Now, where the different uh, results stem from now is the meeting book rate. So typically, you know, um, with a Red Ocean offer, you may have, depending on your industry, it might even be like 0.5%, 1%, and you can obviously look at your own numbers and like, you know, kind of calculate it here, right? But let's say you get in 1.5%. Typically with a Blue Ocean offer, you'll see at 3% plus, right? We've got customers right now who are getting 10% meeting book rate, meaning for every 100 people they message and outbound to, they're getting 10 meetings because their offer is just so so off the chart, but let's keep it realistic. Let's just say you get a 3%, very small, bare minimum 3% with a Blue Ocean offer. And bear in mind, with your offer price, you can charge a whole lot more just because you've got a more valuable offer and you've got something that um, you know your ideal customer actually values a lot more, right? So you know, let's again though, let's just say you've only added an extra $1,500 to your offer, which again, we've got customers charging 10K for their offer, but let's just say 4K for your Blue Ocean offer and for a Red Ocean offer, you typically maybe 2,500 depending on what it is, right? And your sales call conversion rate, usually this is gonna massively increase as well because again, the offer is a lot more irresistible, right? So by sending the same amount of messages, by having the same open rate, only increasing your book call, uh, your meeting set rate by 1.5%, right? Just 1.5% increase. Bear in mind, this is not double. This is a 1.5% increase, right? And only increasing your offer by $1,500, you'll be able to, by implementing a Blue Ocean offer into your business, you'll be able to 5.6X your entire business just by increasing your metrics by this very small amount, which you can easily do with Blue Ocean Offer. We have customers, as I say, who are getting a 10% meeting book rate. So imagine if you got a 10% meeting book rate with this offer, look at how much more you'll be able to scale your business, ready? 18.67 times just by changing your offer. There is nothing else that you can do in your business that will have this drastic impact other than changing your offer.
Okay, you're going to go from revenue generated on a thousand emails sent to, uh, you know, you're going to go from 7,500 uh, revenue generated on a thousand emails sent to 140,000 on the same number of emails sent if you uh, have a Blue Ocean offer with a 10%, let's say 5%, you know, again, being conservative, you're still going to 9.3x your entire business. Now, if we take this uh, volume here and we take this to, you know, 5,000 a month, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? And these are legit numbers. These aren't just pulled out of thin air to make this look better than what it actually is. These are legit numbers. And as I say, your Blue Ocean offer, you'll be able to charge a lot more than 4,000 as well. Typically, you know, we'll look at like 6,800 minimum, ideally. I mean, the proof's in the pudding, okay? So that is the importance of changing your offer, okay? So um, let's get into the training here though, specifically. By the way, Blue Ocean offer, that term and a lot of this stuff here is pulled from the book. I think the book is called, oh, it's called Blue Ocean Strategy, and it talks about Blue Ocean Offers specifically. Highly recommend you pick it up. But this is really tailored to agencies and coaches specifically, right? That's a little bit more like corporate. The Blue Ocean Strategy book goes into more like corporate ideas, but either way, I would highly recommend to read it. So the Blue Ocean Strategy by definition means a market for a product where there is no competition or there's very little competition, okay? So a Blue Ocean exists where there is potential for higher profits. Okay, a blue ocean exists where there's potential for higher profits as there is no competition or a relevant competition. Now a red ocean exists and this is where 99% of you watching this video right now, this is where you exist and there's no harm in that. I used to be in the same position, right? I used to be exactly the same, right? But a red ocean exists where there are, you know, 10 companies, 10 different people that the customer can choose from uh, per customer. So there's 10 options for the client per client pretty much, right? It, you know, and it's not exactly 10 to one, but that's the idea for every one customer, or for every one ideal um, prospect, there's like 10 different options that they can choose from. That's a red ocean by definition, right? And by extension, the companies become commoditized, okay, they become commoditized and are forced to compete on price rather than value because the only thing that differentiates these 10 companies is their pricing because they're all offering the exact same thing. So why would the customer, this person here, why would they choose company seven, which is you, for example, right? Why would they choose you over the 10 other options that they've got? The only reason why they would choose one over the other because everything's the same. The only reason why they would choose one over the other is because one of them's cheaper, right? So then, it, as I say, that what, that is by definition what makes them become commoditized and then you can pre in on price rather than value. And as Alex Mosey says, price is a race to the bottom because one undercuts, okay? Like there's like baseline here, 5,000, right? One goes to 4,500, the next goes to four, the next goes to 3,500, and next minute it's just a race to the bottom, right? And nobody wants to be in that race, okay? So let's have a look at where blue oceans are found typically. There's always extension, um, there's always uh, exceptions to the rule, but typically these are the three main areas where blue oceans are found. The niche, the results, uh, and where the value is created. So specifically, let's have a look. So niche, um, this can come in the form of the industry or the market that you directly serve, right? So maybe, you know, everybody's serving this person over here, you just go ahead and serve a completely different niche, right? So for example, you know, banking, finance, insurance, health and wellness, funding, education, publishing, investment, uh, marketing, sales, accounting, recruitment, and there's a thousand and five hundred million other niches out there, right? So that is the first area where a blue ocean can be found, right? Maybe nobody is helping publishing companies, maybe, right? And so that would be your blue ocean offer, right? Oh, sorry, your um, that's that's where a blue ocean would be found, right? That wouldn't be your blue ocean offer, but that's where the blue ocean's found, okay? You've also got the segment of the industry or market that you serve, right? So, for example, real estate agents. Like from a very broad level view, real estate agents, it's very saturated, right? There's a lot of different offers for real estate agents out there, but you could you could potentially find a segment of real estate agents who, you know, it's a completely blue ocean. So for example, you may serve real estate agents who are closing specifically five to eight deals per month and are struggling specifically with X problem, which has to be solved in order for them to start closing 15 plus deals per month. And maybe, you know, even though you're serving real estate agents as the overarching niche, your specific customer avatar, the segment in which you're going after, maybe nobody's helping five to eight, um, you know, real estate agents who are closing five to eight deals a month and nobody's helping them with this specific problem, which they really need help solving. That then, even though you're in a red ocean industry, uh, which is real estate agents, the segment that you're serving is a blue ocean because nobody's helping them, right? This is a perfect example. I did this, right? Like this stuff, like we do it, okay? So when I very first started teaching, uh, I was, you know, when I first started um, teaching agency owners, which was like the first thing that I ever did, I don't, you know, we don't, we don't specifically help SMMA 
agency owners anymore. You know, we help like agency owners and uh, coaches who ideally are between 10 to 50K a month. But when I first started, it was very SMMA based, right? Like the typical whatever, right? And I found a blue ocean segment. Okay, I, imp I implemented this specific idea here, which is where you find the segment of the industry or market that you serve, right? I found a Blue Ocean segment, which for me was e-commerce agency owners wanting to go from zero to 10K a month in the e-com niche, kind of whatever, right? But I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. Um, e-commerce agency owners wanting to go from zero to 10K per month using Facebook ads as the mechanism, as I say, right? That is specifically who I helped. And, you know, at the time, agency owners as a coaching niche was pretty saturated, right? There's some huge players in that niche. And so if I just went after everyone, right? If I just went after agency owners, I would have been really swallowed up in the red ocean, right? But because as I say, going back to this idea here, there was like 10 coaches for every one agency owner customer, right? Who wanted to learn, right? But there was zero, there was nobody, absolutely nobody helping this segment of agency owners. And so for that, there was like one person, which was only me for like every 10 people because everybody wanted to get in the e-com niche, but nobody was specifically focusing on coaching e-com agencies uh, specifically. Nobody, zero, no one, right? And so I found my Blue Ocean segment. Now there's hundreds, right? But when I got into it initially, nobody was doing it, okay? So that's uh, another area in which you can find Blue Oceans. All right, so the next area in which we find those Blue Ocean segments is at the results level. So, you know, your ideally, you want your customer results to be 10 extra competition. Because again, what that's gonna do is it's gonna put you into a whole new level that you're playing at, which nobody else can get to because you just get way better results. So that also helps you find that blue ocean segment. Um, so for example, you and your competition have the same product and the same promised outcome, but your customers see a three to five, 10 times, whatever the number is, three to five times higher return working with you rather than your competition, right? And so what this means then is that you can then go to marketing and you can create completely different claims to what your competition can create unless they lie. They could lie, maybe, but that'll always come out in the wash every time, right? So with your claims, if you're able to get, you know, three to five, 10 times better client results or customer results, then as I say, you can then make different claims, which then also carves out a different segment of the market, which you can go after, which nobody else can go after. But, and then that makes it because nobody else can go after it because nobody else gets your results. Blue Ocean segment, right? So you've carved out a Blue Ocean because your competition is irrelevant at that point. So that's what this means up here, right? Blue Ocean uh, exists where there is potential for higher profits as there is either no competition or a relevant competition because who's gonna go to somebody who gets terrible results or not as good results as the next person? Nobody. So then the competition's irrelevant. It's like, it doesn't matter, right? Typically this requires though, complete innovation at the mechanism level, right? So the, whatever your delivery is, that's where the innovate, it's required that you innovate at that level because if you deliver the same thing in the same way that your competitors do, then your results are gonna be the same. So you need to do something different, right? So you need innovation at the, mecha at the mechanism level for that. Uh, and then the final way is just the direct value that you create. So uh, this ties in with customer results, but also the area in which the value is created. Let me give you an example here. So everyone in your industry offers lead gen for X niche, whatever the niche is, right? And you instead help that same niche, right? So like real estate, take, you know, just input any any niche you want to in here, but say real estate, right? So everyone in your industry offers lead gen for real estate agents, right? And instead you help real estate agents, same niche, build a sales team, which ultimately takes those leads that, uh, that they're getting by all of this red ocean people, right? Uh, everyone in this red ocean here, lead gen, instead of you just going into lead gen as well, you help real estate agents build sales teams, which ultimately take those leads and increases their quality through nurture and increases the conversion rate from lead to cash collected. So again, same niche, but because where you're creating the value is in a different area, that can also be your Blue Ocean segment. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's where Blue Oceans are found typically. Now I wanna get into, cause I know that's like, obviously it's useful, but it's like, there's not really any actionable tips or, or, or information behind that. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. So now I wanna get into the steps, right? This is literally step by step. Step one, do this. Two, do this. Three, do this, okay? So how uh, uh, do you create a Blue Ocean offer? Well, number one, you've gotta identify industries that you either are familiar with, you have connections in, you have experience in, 
or that you are directly in yourself. Okay, um, one of my, this is a good example. One of my Scale Clients IO customers is at 35K a month with a fashion agency based business and he himself is deep into fashion. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, you're in it yourself. Um, this can also apply to, you know, have experience in and you're in yourself. This applies to, um, for example, the niche that I chose when I first started out, which was e-com agency coaching, specifically e-com. I was running an e-com agency, so I was familiar with the niche. I had experience in it because I was doing the thing. I also achieved the desired outcome that I was promising, zero to 10K a month in an e-com agency. I had done that, right? And then the other thing is, as I said, I was obviously in it myself, right? So you need to identify an industry that you have one of these few things in because you can't go into an industry that you have no idea about, you've never done anything in there and help anyone in that industry. You can't possibly do it, right? Because what are you gonna help them with? Where are you gonna go? Who are you gonna speak to? You have no idea about anything, right? Um, so you need to, I, this is the easiest place to start because if you've already got deep expertise in a specific industry, you're already 10 steps ahead of everyone else, right? Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is to do market research and find the threat level one issue, whether it's known or unknown. So all business is, right? This is a really good thing to remember. All business is, is providing solutions to problems, period. That's it. And how much you can charge is based on how valuable the problem is that you're solving for the niche or the segment of the niche. How valuable is that problem? It's this valuable. Okay, that means you can charge this, right? So how much you can charge is directly uh, proportionate to the amount of value that you create. How much value you, cre you create is based on the solution, on the problems that you're providing a solution to and how valuable that direct solution is, right? If you help somebody, you know, with their sales team, for example, and that creates 100K, right, for them in revenue, profit, whatever the number is, you can charge them a lot more than you can if you help that same person with their accounting, for example, because there's just not as much money in you helping them with their accounting as there is with you helping them with their sales team build, whatever, right? Hopefully that makes sense. And then here, known or unknown, what's very interesting is that the amount of people, like I'm personally surprised at how many people don't actually know what their problem is. It's crazy. Right? So they will typically have a desired goal, right? They want this thing, but something, right, which is a problem, is stopping them and they don't know what the specific problem or, or the solution is. So again, take my example um, or my history, for example, um, when I was started in uh, agency coaching, right? Everybody wanted more clients. Everybody wanted more clients, right? And everybody thought that their problem was that they didn't have the perfect email outreach script. Every time, that's what everyone thought, right? In that specific industry. So they thought their threat level one issue was the fact that they didn't have the email script locked in or whatever, right? But actually, their real problem, the real thing that was stopping them from like getting the results that they want is what I'm going through right in this video. It was their offer. Their offer was the same as every single other person. They were in a red ocean. And so they couldn't get any results because they were offering the same thing everybody else was offering, right? It happened every single time. So it's very interesting to see how many people either don't know what their problem is or they're confused on what the actual problem is. And so you as the entrepreneur offering some sort of solution, you need to know what the real problem is and you also need to know what the problem is that your audience or that your prospects think that they have because then you need to market the problem they think they have and then you need to deliver the real solution to the real problem that it is that they actually have, right? Um, but that's a whole nother thing for another day, right? But the one of the, you know, a couple of good ways to understand the problems in your, in your industry is number one, interviews, right? So speaking with directly your ideal customer. Another one is other people's content, right? This is really powerful um, because like, you know, if you go on YouTube and you search, you know, real estate agents, for example, right? Like these are other people's content. And if that piece of content is produced for your ideal prospect, then guess what? Go into the comment sections of those ads, or sorry, of those videos and that content because guess who's probably gonna be in those comment sections? Your ideal uh, prospect, right? Your ideal audience. And then you can see directly from their mouth what it is that they're saying, what it is that they're talking about, what it is that their issues are, what they're struggling with, what their goals are. You're gonna see it. Also, another really good place to do this is ads and VSLs and webinars. Watch ads, read ads, watch VSLs, watch webinars, if it's applicable to your niche, if you have people doing this in your niche, right? Again, for me in agency coaching, there's a lot of ads out there on other coaches helping agencies do whatever it was, right? There's a lot of VSLs, there's a lot of webinars. I consumed all of that, why? Because all of those ads, those VSLs, those webinars, those pieces of content had so much research in them, right? Because the, you know, the coach had researched what the problems were. So I could watch those and get like, 
probably three to four hours worth of research in one 15 minute VSL, in one 60 minute webinar. Very powerful. Okay. Number three is to find and understand adjacent slash substitute industries. This is pretty powerful and important here. So adjacent industries, for example, would be real estate and mortgage brokers. They're adjacent, right? Um, the next one is social media and SMS. It's adjacent. Okay. Uh, and then the next one would be coaching and agencies, right? Coaching agencies. These are, this is more of a substitute, I would say, honestly. Um, coaching and agencies isn't as much as a adjacent, really. Uh, it's more of a substitute because if you want to get something, right, um, you're a prospect and, you know, you want to, again, let's just use easy examples. You're a real estate agent and you want more leads. Do you, you know, you've got basically two options at that point. Either l number one, learn how, well, you, I suppose you've got three options, but in this uh, in this example, let's just use two. You've got um, either you can learn how to get the leads yourself, that would require coaching, or you could bring in an agency who does it for you. So same end goal, you've got two routes to use. You've got two options, right? And the third option that I said is like, they could hire somebody in-house as an employee, um, but usually it's mainly gonna be either learn it yourself or work with an agency. That's a substitute industry, okay? So you need to find and understand the adjacent industries for your offer and the substitute industries for your offer, okay? And what you wanna do, the goal that, you know, you don't wanna just find this and then just go, okay, real estate and mortgage brokers, that's it. No, what you wanna do is you wanna find it and then you wanna borrow ideas and concepts from these adjacent and substitute industries and seek to understand what's good about their offering and what customers truly value from those offerings and those uh, substitute and adjacent industries. What is it that they truly value? What's the, what do the customers actually truly value? And what do they just don't? Why, what do they just not care about, but it's just in the offer anyway, right? And then what you wanna do, and you wanna eliminate and reduce where possible so that then you in your offer, you only have the things that the prospect actually cares about and nothing else. Right. So for an example, this is the perfect example. I do want to say this example was pulled directly out of uh, the Blue Ocean Strategy book. He used this example. It's a great example. So there's a company called NetJet, okay, which is a company that sells fractional ownership in jets. Okay. And when they were founded, they looked at typical travel for corporate companies and realized they only had two options. Now these two options were substitutes. So they could do this, you know, they could do X or they could do Y, and they're still going to get the same end result by using e either one. So it's a substitute, right, for either one. And the substitutes were, you either buy a private jet or you fly commercially. That's it, right? And they're a substitute. They're not adjacent, they're substitutes, okay? And so what they did, what NetJet did, and this is exactly what you've got to do, okay? What they did was they weighed up the pros and cons of each. They weighed up the pros and cons of buying a jet versus pros and cons of flying commercial. Well, private jets, the pros was, Flight time decreased drastically, right? Because it was very direct, right? There's no waiting around in lines, all that bullshit, right? Uh, flight time decreased drastically. Energy upon landing was much higher, right? Because they're on a private jet the whole uh, the whole time, right? And work output during the flight was also much higher, which is expected. Now the cons is obviously the upfront investment of buying a jet was crazy. Right now, commercial, flying commercial. The pros of this was it's much cheaper. It was only paid when travel was needed. Right, whereas a private jet, you're paying for that all the time, whether you're traveling or not. Commercial, you only pay when you need to fly. Right, and there was no extortionate reoccurring costs. Now, the cons of commercial, as I'm sure you can probably guess, flight time increased massively. Okay, from like uh, um, going to the airport, that whole journey of flying increased so much. Right, oftentimes had to stay over the night at the destination. They couldn't go somewhere and come back in the same day. Whereas private, you can do that. They were tired upon arrival. There was really no work done, at least deep work. Okay, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. And so what NetJet saw, right? And so NetJet saw this and they just took the best of both worlds. Fly private, you buy fractional ownership. So essentially the cost of commercial, at least first class, right? And if NetJet was no longer available, uh, sorry, if NetJet was, uh, wasn't was available, if there was no jet available, um, NetJet would just charter one. And so that then, you know, that's such a good offer because it's like you get the best of both worlds and that's it. Like there's no down, real downside to it, period.
And so this is what you need to look at. Pros and cons of the substitute um, industries and the adjacent industries of whatever it is that your offer is. And then you need to weigh up the pros and cons of each and then find and pick and choose the best of each and eliminate the worst of each, the cons of each, right? That's step three. Step four is um, based on the threat level one problem um, and insights from adjacent industries and solutions. You need to comprise a bold claim or a promise, okay? Um, so remember, key elements of a powerful promise is that it's ultra specific, it's unique, it's urgent, oh, sorry, it's urgent and it's useful, okay? They're like the four main use, right? And they're really the four key elements of a powerful promise, right? Um, and you wanna create one based on the, uh, uh, the threat level one issue and the insights that you've pulled from those adjacent industries slash solutions, okay? Adjacent, this should say adjacent slash substitute industries slash solutions, okay? And so again, you wanna make the prom promise ultra specific, unique, useful, and urgent, okay? Now side note, this is something else that's really important to know. You can do this for multiple offers at once. So you can test like five different offers at once and just see which one hits most and triple down on that. I had a, um, a call with a one-on-one -on -one call with a customer the other day at Scale Clients IO, and um, he asked me, he was like, dude, I've got this offer, but I don't know who it's best suited for. It was like, it was versus um, uh, brand owners or agency owners. You know, he was just like, I've, I've not got a lot of clarity on what route I wanna take this offer. I was like, well, have you sent? Yes. Who responded more? Who is more interactive? Who have you had more sales calls with? And he's like, ain't you on? I was like, that's it, done. That's who you go for, right? And so if you've got, you know, you can create like four or five offers. And if you're like, I don't know which one to pick, whatever, run with them all, see who responds more, see who's more interactive with it, see which offer hits more with the person that you're sending it to, and run with that. That's it, that's, that's all you need to do. Right? And then obviously, and that is really step five, which is once you've created these claims, you've created these offers, right? Based on all of these previous steps, that's when you will then go to market and offer it and receive real time feedback. And based on that feedback, that should influence your decision as to what offer you choose, right? Um, so here we're testing for level of resonance, right? And you can really test that by response rates, book call rates, et cetera, et cetera. And you also wanna sell before you build. Always, acqu always acquire three to five paying beta customers for the offer before you ever build anything. So if you've got a consulting offer and you need to build like pre-done uh, or pre-built like trackers and pre-built uh, sales uh, course content or whatever, don't build any of that before you've actually got three to five paying beta customers for whatever it is that you're offering. And the reason you want them to be paying in particular is because somebody could say, you know, like if you say, what do you think about this offer, right? You do your, um, your outreach, you test the offer and somebody says, this is awesome, I need this. They can say that, which is fine, but that's not a true indication as to whether or not that offer is gonna work, right? Because when that then person uh, gets sent an invoice from you for 2K, for 5K, for 10K, for that solution, it's always gonna be a different conversation. That person may be like, ah, uh, you know, I mean, it was, you know, I, I think it is good, but like, it's not that important for us right now. Even though he just said, this is awesome, I would, I would get this all the time. When they get sent the invoice, it's a different story. So you need to make sure that they're actually paying beta customers so that you know with 100% certainty, people are actually willing to pay for this solution, okay? And then from here, you wanna validate the claim, right? One that your industry, as I say, is willing to pay for, that's the goal here. Um, and typically, you'll validate through outbound, Current leverage, if you have any. So this is like, if, you, if you've got an audience right now, for example, this YouTube channel, right? At the point of recording this, we're just under 10,000 subs, I think, right? So if I brought out a new offer, that's current leverage, which I could test that new offer with without building anything. I just create an offer based on all of these previous steps. You know, I could just come to YouTube, post a video with a new offer and just see what the resonance is based on likes, based on comments, based on um, replies that I get, based on, you know, real world feedback. And then if I actually wanna test the offer truly and see its real resonance, I'll set up a landing page where it's to collect a uh, payment and I'll see if anyone buys it. And if they do, I validated it, truly, okay? Um, so that's what you do if you have any current leverage, or you can do through outbound, which is, you know, you can do for any offer because you can do outbound for any industry, or you can do ads, right? And this is if you have the capital. It's actually better, honestly, if you have capital, I would just run ads because it's the quickest way to learn. And, uh, you know, you don't need any prerequisites for that except capital. Um, now, if you've not got no capital and no current leverage, then outbound is gonna be your best friend to test the offer. Once you've found the offer that works best, that resonates best, resonates most, that's what you run with. And that is how you find a blue ocean offer. So hopefully this video was useful. This took me a long time to create. I'm really mapped down in uh, like a, th a three page end to end doc right here. Um, so 
All I ask in return is you like the video if you found value in it and uh, you subscribe to the channel and comment below what your thoughts are and also comment below any questions that you have specifically and comment the word blue ocean below to let me know that you actually watch it from beginning to the end. Okay, so hopefully you found value and uh, I will see you in the next one.